What psychedelics do, and I begin this as a kind of summation, is they enrich experience, which sounds trivial, except that experience is all that we have. One of the things, if I if my career or whatever it is could be said to be about one thing, it's the notion that your understanding depends upon yourself. In other words, no myth of the tribe will satisfy these myths like science and religion and politics. They do not satisfy uh, when I talk about this, I usually mention the notion of the flying saucer. People who believe in flying saucers uh, as alien spacecraft nevertheless so undervalue their own identity that they believe that it will, that contact will come to the Secretary General of the United Nations. He will assemble Time Newsweek and the reporters from The Economist. They will get together with Carl Sagan and whoever, and they will all explain it to all of us, and then we will understand what's going on. This is a, um, a sold-out point of view. You have accepted their definition of you as a citizen. The real fact of the matter is an anarchy of the imagination where each one of us is our own Magellan, we are not living in the age when all frontiers have disappeared, when all things have been tamed and made mundane. We are living in uh, the most exciting era that has ever been because we are about to turn to the real terra incognito, which is the terra incognito in our minds. And uh, it is for us to do and this is why the drugs are so controversial, because they free you from the myth of the tribe. And that single fact, the fact that they decondition you, they don't decondition you at the chemical level, like make you forget everything you believe, so you have to start over. They decondition you at the ideological level. So you just look around at the society you're in, and it's contradictions and uh, preposterous assumptions are perfectly visible to you and that frees you then to create a new world through self-experience not by taking Heidegger's word for it or somebody else's word for it but creating it through your own experience and this is what we should all be involved in and this would carry us to psychological balance it's trying to make sense of our intuitions in the light of the enormous pressure to accept prepackaged ideologies that makes neurotics of us all. And the only, the only way out of that is to step back from it and to say, I will only believe what I know. I will be like someone from Missouri. <laughs> you know, show me and I'll believe it. This is why I always, my favorite person in the New Testament is uh, is Thomas the doubter <laughs> because if you will recall uh, Christ uh, returned to the apostles were gathered in the upper room and Christ came to them I think on the 40th day but Thomas was not there so then <clears throat> later and then Christ went away and so then Thomas came and they said the master was with us and he said you know, you guys have been smoking too many of those little brown <laughs> cigarettes. The master has gone from the plane. Unless I put my hand into the wound, I will not believe it. So then a few days later, Thomas was with them, and Christ came again. And he said to him, Thomas, put your hand into the wound that you might believe. And he did and he believed. Okay, so what, what conclusion do we draw from this story? The conclusion is <laughs> that of all of the people, of all of the disciples, the only person in all of human history recorded to have actually touched the incorporeal body of the risen Christ was Thomas the Doubter. 
uh-huh. and he was allowed that. He was vouchsafed that unique uh, um, blessing because he doubted. And that's, yes, he insisted on experiencing it himself. And so he touched the incorporeal body, the white stone at the end of time. And this is what we are trying to do because, you know, if you can get your hand on the doorknob, you can turn it and walk through. And uh, the Secretary General of the United Nations need not be at your elbow. Nobody need be at your elbow. And this is what shamans know. They have touched the doorknob, turned it, and walked through, and they are out of time and out of history, and their immense personal presence, or at least the immense personal presence that I have experienced uh, among the ones who are genuine, is because they have taken responsibility for their model of the world and have modeled the world based entirely on their own experience.